This video is brought to you by Tata Consultancy Services, India's largest information technology and consulting services organization, building on greater futures through innovation and collective knowledge. The British East India Company came to India to trade in such everyday things like cotton, tobacco, spices. Sometimes they chanced upon priceless historical objects and sometimes they got their hands on brilliant sparkly things, gems, jewels and precious objects. Some of these quietly went into the private estates of the company's employees. Many more went straight to the British crown. Let's talk about the sparkliest of all the treasures that left India. A solid gold throne that some say cost twice as much as the Taj Mahal. A throne thickly set with precious stones, one of which was the Kohinoor diamond. Our story begins in Delhi at the magnificent Red Fort. It was built by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan in 1648 at a time when the Mughal Empire was at its peak and very, very prosperous. The Red Fort was his residence and also his royal court where he would meet his subjects. Shah Jahan wanted to project an aura of power and invincibility and so he commissioned an exquisite throne, the takht e taus or the Peacock Throne. The throne used up over a thousand kilos of gold and another 230 kilos of diamonds, rubies, emeralds and sapphires. At the very top was a massive diamond, the Kohinoor. The Kohinoor is believed to have been mined in the 11th century from the Kolor pits of the Golconda mines in present-day Andhra Pradesh. The Kakatiya kings who ruled over those parts were the first to own this diamond. But this diamond was destined to go on a wild journey across kingdoms and continents. And almost every time its owner either lost power or met with an untimely death. The Kohinoor, they say, is a cursed stone. In 1310 CE, the Kakatiya kings were defeated by the army of a Delhi Sultan, Alauddin Khilji, and the dynasty itself ended soon after. The Kohinoor was part of the loot that went to Delhi. In 1526, the first Mughal king, Babur, conquered Delhi and the Kohinoor became his. His son Humayun inherited the diamond but soon ended up losing his kingdom. He eventually regained the throne but died in a freak accident barely six months later. His great-grandson was Shah Jahan, who had it set in the peacock throne. And on this spectacular throne sat Shah Jahan and his successors, showing off their might and power to a bedazzled world. But behind all that razzle-dazzle lay gory power struggles. Brother blinded brother, and uncles and nephews killed each other mercilessly. Shah Jahan himself was imprisoned by his own son and remained helpless as his sons murdered each other for his throne. And from its vantage point on the peacock throne, the Kohinoor saw it all. The beginning of the end of the Mughal Empire. Generations passed. In 1739, a Persian king named Nadir Shah invaded Delhi. He barreled his way in and massacred over 30,000 people in just one day. He carted away immense treasures back to Persia, including the peacock throne. But he pulled out the Kohinoor diamond and the Taimur ruby from the throne and proudly wore them on his armband. You know what's coming next. Within a few years, Nadir Shah met with a gruesome end and the Persian empire itself began to break up. As for the peacock throne, it was never seen again probably melted for its gold value. The Kohinoor now fell into the hands of a close confidant of Nadir Shah, an Afghan general named Ahmad Shah Durrani. He took this bobble of bad luck with him to Afghanistan, where he established his own independent kingdom. After Durrani's death, there was a vicious fight for his throne. The Kohinoor passed through many hands, witness to a savage spree of killing, blinding and poisoning. It eventually reached a prince named Shah Shuja Durrani. Not long after, he lost his throne and had to flee to Lahore in present-day Pakistan in 1813. Now, Lahore was the capital of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, ruler of the prosperous Sikh empire. The Maharaja agreed to give Shah Shuja Durrani refuge in exchange for the Kohinoor. It is said that he wanted to donate the diamond to the Jagannath temple in Puri. 
but he died before he could do so. And soon after, the Sikh empire itself started disintegrating. This was just the opportunity the British in India were looking for. Punjab was rich and strategically important. And now it was without a powerful king. They quietly manipulated the turn of events and soon took Punjab and all its crown jewels for themselves. The thrilled British Viceroy decided to gift the Kohinoor to Queen Victoria. He arranged for a ship to transport the Kohinoor to London. But they say the curse sailed with it. There was an outbreak of cholera on the ship and then it ran into a violent gale that it barely survived. It finally managed to reach London. It was decided that the Kohinoor would be fixed on Queen Victoria's crown, but it was way too heavy and people felt that it was not sparkly enough. So they decided to cut more facets into it and the 191 carat Kohinoor shrank to roughly half its size. In 1854, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's son, 14-year-old Prince Dalip, was made to ceremonially hand over the smaller but sparklier Kohinoor to the Queen. It is now on display at the Tower of London, sitting snugly in the crown that Queen Elizabeth I wore at her coronation. The Kohinoor has seen the end of powerful dynasties across India, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Persia. Is it any surprise that it acquired a reputation of being a cursed stone? Strangely, the curse is said to affect only men and not women. Till date, only the British queens have worn the Kohinoor on their crowns never a king. Should Britain return the Kohinoor? The Indian government has made the demand several times, insisting that it was acquired from India through unfair means. But then Pakistan too has staked a claim on the diamond because, well, because Maharaja Ranjit Singh ruled from Lahore, which is now in Pakistan. And the Afghans believe that the Kohinoor truly belongs to them. But of course, because Shah Shuja Durrani only surrendered it to Maharaja Ranjit Singh under duress. The British, however, remain unfazed. To them, the Kohinoor, cursed or not, still remains their prized possession, the jewel in their crown. Did you like that story? There are many such fascinating stories of India waiting to be told. And we'd like to thank our sponsor, Tata Consultancy Services, for helping us bring these stories to you. Tata Consultancy Services is India's largest IT services, consulting and business solutions organization. Over the last 50 years, it's been a partner to some of the largest businesses in the world, helping them in their transformation journeys. It has also been closely associated with projects to restore and showcase India's heritage to the world. And Story Trails is proud to collaborate with Tata Consultancy Services, building on a shared belief to bring these lesser known stories of India's culture and heritage to you. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in our next episode.